What happens whenever you have to slice anything is that you have to make sure you have the right settings, okay? And the right settings consists of these three items, which is the print settings, the printer settings, and the filament settings. And occasionally we will be releasing new settings out there for the market to use whenever we find something that is going to work just fine. At the same time, our users who are out there who are going to be using different types of materials are also going to be uploading their own version of slicer settings. And you can either go ahead and configure that by using this little button you see right here which says configure in order to go into each one of these print settings, printer settings, or filament settings and dialing it in yourself. Or you can go ahead and take the ones that they have which are typically .ini files and that's um, India, November, India type of files. And those particular files um, inside of Windows XP, like we're about on this on this one, is hidden. It's the same thing when it comes to Windows 7. They're also hidden underneath the application data or app data inside of your user settings. Now, the problem is that the only way you can get there is by actually closing out, in this case, you need to close out Repetrel. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to go into where our see, uh, where's my computer? Is yep, that my computer? You're on it. Okay, good. good. And now we're going to go to our C drive, our local drive. And in Windows 7, um, you're going to see it underneath users down here. Uh, for this one, you're going to see uh, for Windows XP, it's underneath documents and settings, typically. Then you go down to HiRel, and you'll see application data. In at Windows 7, it's app data. APP. Now, these are hidden file folders, so you will have to go back, and if it isn't showing up, you're going to have to uh, um, check the view and make sure that the properties on your file viewing can actually show your hidden files. If you don't know how to do that, you might want to go ahead and Google it, um, and you'll, you'll find out how to do it very quickly. Okay. Since I have application data, you have where it says Slicker, slice th or Slicer, as, as we call it, the Slick 3R. Okay. And inside of here, these are where those files actually rest. So you have your filament file, you've got your printer file, and of course you've got your print file. And this is where you drop those files into. So in Windows 7, typically goes whatever the C root directory is, users, uh, whatever the username is, uh, documents and settings to application data or app data, then roaming you'll see roaming and then roam, underneath the roaming uh, inside the roaming file folder you're going to see where it says slick 3r and inside of there is where going to be where these files are going to be uh, i believe it's the same thing for windows 8 as well so um, for any of you windows users that's where it's going to be held so that's where all these files are being held okay so the old stuff that we have here what i like to do is i like to just go ahead and put this stuff into new and then folder and it's called this like old settings. Now these settings typically are the ones that were loaded up, um, the ones that you saw earlier in this video, um, are the ones that uh, unfortunately were made for other printers. They were not made for ours. So because the others that are out there typically use the Arduino based architecture and even those can vary from chipset to chipset, so I urge you, urge you cautiously to use those very, very sparingly. So inside of here, there we go, should only be one, the print settings should have about three of them and three or four, yeah, there we go. So support with no support, good. Okay, so these are the correct set, these are the correct uh, recipes, and we're just going to close this guy. And now we're going to open up Repetrel, give it just a moment to load. There we go. Okay. And while we're waiting for this guy to load up all the way, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the heat back on. There we go. And now we're going to go over to where's this slicer? And we're just going to check and look at that. Okay. Now, this is the biggest trick of all. Hmm. Even though you see that these settings are are set up which look like as if they're correct. They are not. Slicer has a bug in it, and same thing with the Repetier Ho, same thing with Repetrel. All of these guys have the same issue. Just because they're selected here does not mean they're actually selected, actually selected and are gonna go through your slicer. So what you have to do is two things. First of all, you're gonna have to click on configure and give it roughly about 10 to 15 seconds and it will pop up, there we go 
with this little guy here. And you'll notice that the very first thing you see right here is default, okay? And you don't necessarily have to select whichever one you're going to be printing from, but that one right there tells me that no matter what settings you put up here, without going to the configuration screen, it doesn't load up those files you just put in that, in that particular uh, file folder, which holds all the recipes. So you have to re so what you're doing is reinitializing all of the Python drivers to recognize these individual settings that we see here. So I'm just going to click on one that we're not even going to be printing with. Same thing with the filament settings. So let's do this one. And then finally with the printer settings, go down here to this one. Now, see, all of that just loaded in here. All of it just took. Because before you didn't even have the custom G code that was there. Now you do. So now we can just go ahead and close out of Slicer. And this goes for any version of Slicer, from 0.90, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, 0 0.90 to even 1.01. .01. I've seen that. So there you go. Okay, so now with this guy, you also have to initialize him here. Now, thankfully, you only have to do this once every time you copy over your new recipes. You only have to do this once. Then they're there, then, then it recognizes it. So we're just going to select this. And let's just do uh, 200 microns, no support. And for this guy, 100, two, uh, 200, 300 microns, just there. And now you'll, you'll be able to, to, to work, you, now you'll be able to work with the actual things that you have here. And it will print, I'm sorry, it will slice <coughs> correctly, and you will get the correct G code. But this is the one little bomb that I've seen inside of here, and I do not know how to fix it because it's within the Python site settings inside of Slick 3R. So it's nothing that I can do on the outside. I checked it via, via Windows, or Windows C Sharp. It was one of the things I've been doing on, you know, at nights. And that's not the issue. The issue is actually within Slicer. So now if we go back to the click configure one more time, you're going to notice this is just your double check, just to make sure everything's working just fine. And sometimes you have to do this when they come up with new versions out of Slicer and when you put new versions of Slicer on here. Make sure that you see that it does not say default or simple mode. Default or simple mode in these guys up here when it comes to your filament settings, your print settings, uh, your printer settings, and make sure that it doesn't say that. Okay, and it does not on this guy, so we're good. All right, and now that's good. So you have all that set up, you're going to do well. All right, thanks.